Welcome to the Tuck Shop Podcast, everybody. I'm Matt Cernell from UPJ, recording on a great, kind of warm, odd, this has been a long, odd fall. <laughs> but that's not the news, David. Today's episode. Today's episode. We are, uh, is yeah. our one-year anniversary of the start of this show. A bit of a tear. Well, <laughs> there were people who didn't think we'd make it this far. <laughs> there, I think there were people who didn't want us to make it this far. There was that, too. But... <laughs> But, but here we are. Still not canceled. And we've kept the doors locked for a year. and uh, they, haven't, it, they haven't gotten us yet. But no, but, it's been a great year. Thank you for believing in this yeah. and uh, going along with this adventure. But in all honesty, you know, this has been another, um, I don't want to use the word weapon, but it's been another weapon in our tool case, or tool in our tool case. There you where, go, that's better. Um, Tools are better. From the media side of it, you know, whenever we do an alumni event or we're doing a pre-alumni, uh, pre-event alumni gathering, when I say, hey, we also have a podcast, um, it's interesting because it's like, oh, cool, a podcast? Yeah, it drops every Wednesday. And then you say it's the tuck shop, and then people go off on these uh, tangents of, oh, tuck shop, like yep. this, that, and the next thing. And I just want to relate one quick story along those lines. Um I think it was last last week, last Tuesday, Wednesday, something like that. We were at the uh, the um, Brian Houston does a large engineer um, career day. Yeah, career like the career fair. Seventy or eighty uh, companies come here to recruit uh, our engineers. Out of that seventy or eighty, I'd say I don't know a little bit more than half. More close, than half were close to two alum. thirds are alum. And we had our alum swag table out and so on and so forth. And it was interesting because this one alum. This one alum comes up and says, are you the guys on the podcast? And I was like, wow, a fan. Yeah, it was like our first <laughs> our first honest out in the public, didn't know who we were, just was hoping that we'd be their fan. And it, that's, a, that's a different surreal experience for me. Um, but it was fun. And and people do have have related to this. They share it. They like it. But and it's been it's been enjoyable. I'm going to take it beyond fun. I mean, it's effective. Um, yes. Which again, you know, with the ever changing, uh, you know, who can keep up with it? You know, is it X? Is it Y? What do we? You know, what do we? We hip hopping? We tick tocking? You know, what? What is it that we're? You know, where we're trying to? You know, what what vehicle we're we using? And uh, you know, this is one that's been very effective. Um, I know you had mentioned before how many countries, how many states, how many listeners. Um, We've had a, just to give you a note. It's like fourteen or fifteen different countries. 30 some states and over a thousand different listeners. That's good. I mean, and that's yeah. where I say it's an effective, it's, you know, it can be fun at times, but it's a very effective form of communication where um, it, it, it's tough because, you know, I'm just going to wrap it up that it's tough to stay in touch with alum because emails change, addresses change, uh, things go down, things go up. Um, you know, I'll get alum that'll say, we didn't know about this event. And then I'll kind of ask them, well, when was the last time you updated your email? And there's this dead silence. Well, why is that important? <laughs> like, well, that's how we're going to get a hold of you. This podcast helps us to put it out there on those, you know, those free airwaves where somebody stumbles upon it and says, oh, I know that, uh, you know, like I'll say, you know, tonight uh, we will be doing our, you know, uh, Lady Cats basketball versus the Panthers at the Pete at six o'clock um, reception at five. Um, I always feel like that scene in, uh, in Slapshot where I say, you know, plenty of good hockey to come on <laughs> down, bring the family. Um, but we, we will um, be there tonight and maybe somebody will hear or see it this afternoon and say, man, you know what? I didn't know about that or I forgot. Um, yeah, so, so if you're hearing this today, Wednesday, when we release this Wednesday the 30th, if it's before 5 o'clock, yeah. you still have a chance. You still have a chance. If it's uh, after I've left my office, I'm going to do something that probably might be dangerous, but I'm going to give my cell phone number out uh, on the podcast. Give me a call. We'll make sure we get you in. 412-638-2335. Tickets are free. Um, five o'clock. Uh, we'll be getting a group of alumni together um, for a meetup, and, and then we'll watch. Uh, I don't know. Maybe we'll ask our guest what her predictions are for tonight's game, <laughs> um, being that she is uh, not only an alum, but a uh, uh, she was a pretty good basketball player in her day, I think, here. So we'll have to see what her uh, predictions are for tonight's big matchup between uh, <laughs> the Lady Cats here in Pitt Johnstown and the uh, and the Panthers. So if you're in the Oakland area, plenty of good basketball tonight. Stop in. Some neat stuff going on. We had the Business and Enterprise Reunion last week. It was a great event. All the all these great stuff. Follow us on the social media. Now you can call Dave anytime, day or night. Yeah. Um, 
It'll happen. And it, and it does happen. Uh, well, I think we should kick off the meat of this episode, our one-year anniversary episode, with today's guest. We needed somebody big, and I think we couldn't get any better than the guest that had agreed to do this, Jen Toscano from Pit, Pit. Ming Pit, Big Pit. Taking partial credit for this amazing football program and so many other great <laughs> stuff. And best of all, she's a UPJ grad. Jen, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Excited to join you today for, for the podcast and talk all things Pitt and, and hopefully all things Pitt Johnstown too. You are uh, you get to kind of zoom in with us and we're recording that way. You're one of the few guests that we've had in the last year that actually has a view that kind of rivals the one that I get outside the studio looking <laughs> over the courtyard there. Yep. Uh, lucky, lucky to have the, the view out the back uh, of my, my office. Talk about, let's start with your time here at UPJ. What brought you to UPJ to begin with? Uh, the women's basketball program, uh, first and foremost, certainly grew up uh, as a Somerset County native uh, going to uh, basketball camps in the summer to, to Jody Gullett's basketball camps. Uh, respected uh, and loved what she was at the time doing with the women's basketball program and the success that they had. Uh, for me, uh, the second part of that was was knowing that that likely I wanted to be an education major and, and the, the academic uh, opportunities at, at Pitt Johnstown. And, and truly, it came then down to the family feel uh, when when I was on that campus uh, again as a camper and then being recruited. And so. You know, I, I think it was was the academic opportunities, uh, the ability to, to compete at the next level, uh, at a very high level, uh, with what what Coach Coach Gold and and Coach Yezinowski had done with that women's basketball program, uh, and then for me it was also important that that family piece, uh, not only on the campus but you know for for my family to still still be able to watch me play. And I'm sure they got to plenty of games and, and saw some amazing stuff. You had you had quite a career here as a basketball player. I, I did. Uh, I did because I was surrounded by great teammates, and I had really, really great coaches that, that put me in positions uh, to have a great career. But it was my teammates uh, the whole way that, that really enabled me to do what I could do on the court. Uh, but we did it together. You know, uh, we had uh, a lot of great games. Uh, but we had some games w that that for sure we were challenged in some seasons. Uh, my my sophomore and junior year where we were we were challenged. But um, again, it comes back to doing it together uh, and and, ha and surrounding yourself with with great people. And I was fortunate to have really great teammates and, and really great coaches during my time at Pitt Johnstown. Let me ask a quick question, um, Jen. So you know that's an interesting point that you make. It you know that it, it's a team sport, and uh, so. When you're surrounded and you're coached uh, by people that are at that level, um, is it a choice to be great? Is it a choice or do you don't have a choice when you're surrounded by, you know, you just, you know, you got every day and, you know, you scored 13, almost 1400 points uh, here at Pitt Johnstown. I guess my question is, as you were on that journey, were you thinking that that's where you were headed or were you just trying to keep up with the program around you because of the, because of the atmosphere? Yeah, I think, um, we did it together. Um, you know, we, we had goals. Uh, we had team goals, we had individual goals, but I think the team team goals always outweigh that. And so uh, we worked every day, worked really hard every day as, as a team, knowing again, if, if we understood what our roles were uh, and responsibilities, if, if we did what we were supposed to do, um, the team would be successful. And so that's why, to me, it's always been a team sport. Uh, I think that I've carried that over in my professional career, too, knowing that there isn't one thing that I've been able to accomplish uh, so far that that ha that I've done on my own. It, it's been with, because of the people that, that have been beside me. Um, and I, I would say that for sure during my four years at, at EPJ was um, – we, we worked together um, because we knew we wanted to be successful. And the only way we were going to do that is, is, is to do it together. You, you talked about the, the, uh, uh, the basketball side for a little bit, but you did touch on the academic side. That's a big part of anything. Any, we've had a number of different, different both athletes and coaches, including uh, the late Pat Pecora on talking about the inter interconnectivity there. What was that like with you being connected both on the, 
academic and the and the athletic side. And how did that play a role? And what was that like for your experience here through your program? Uh, by far, one of the the best parts of my experience at Pitt Johnstown, the faculty and staff that I had as I was a secondary math education major, um, and the faculty and staff that I had, not only that that mentored me in the classroom, but were also supportive of, of me as a student athlete and understanding the, the commitment uh, to be uh, to excel at a very high level, both on the court and, and in the classroom was was tremendous. Uh, there's there's no uh, question that that the faculty and staff didn't prepare me uh, for life after basketball. Um, and so, you know, very appreciative of that, but that played a huge role in, in my ability to be, be successful uh, on the court was the support that I had from the faculty and staff side at, at Pitt Johnstown. Going through your journey. So you, you finish this time, you, you have your, your, your diploma and you're done. You're, you're clearly not teaching now, and we're going to talk about what you're doing now. <laughs> did you spend any time teaching, or did life kind of drag you different directions like it does many of us? Yeah, I have not. I have not, uh, outside of my student teaching experience, I have not ta- taught a math class to date. Um, I finished my, my four years of, of eligibility uh, in the, the spring of, of 99 and returned to, to Pitt Johnstown in the fall of 99 to do my student teaching. During that time, uh, I was a, a graduate assistant uh, coach on the staff with, with Jody and Deb uh, while I was doing my student teaching. Uh, I finished my student teaching in December, officially had earned my degree stayed in Johnstown to finish the women's basketball season. Uh, once that season ended, I returned home and started substitute teaching uh, until the, the school year ended. Uh, I was fortunate enough as, as May approached and I started interviewing for potential teaching positions uh, that the athletic director position uh, opened at, at Myersdale, my, my alma mater. Um, Superintendent talked to me about it. I was very transparent, said I've got zero experience other than being a high school athlete and a collegiate athlete. Uh, I wasn't a sport management major. I wasn't a sport admin major. Uh, I was a, I was going to teach math. Um, interviewed for the position, uh, went through the entire process and was fortunate enough to be offered that position. So I spent three years as a, as a high school athletic director uh, before I transitioned to the collegiate level. Let me ask a quick question. What did you... Uh... We're talking about education here now. Um, what did you learn at Myersdale as athletic director that you carried on to, I mean, years later uh, at the University of Pittsburgh? I mean, it's Division One. you know. What did you learn or do you think that you carried on uh, even to this day? Well, um, y- you know, the, the irony of it all, right, was I returned to Myersdale a, a little – over four years after I had graduated as a, as a high school senior and into a position that my coaches, uh, I, I became their boss per se um, for a, a little over four years after I graduated. And so um, very quickly uh, I had to pro- mature professionally and, and kind of switch the roles a little bit, but all of that prepared me, all of those coaches, my coaches who, who I still uh, consider mentors for me today, um, helped me prepare for uh, athletics at the next level. Um, you know, as a high school AD, a lot of times you, you're doing it all. You're, you're taking tickets, you're, you're setting up <laughs> game set up, clock, sometimes you're running the scoreboard. And so your experience as a high school athletic director gives you a, a good sense of, of all aspects of athletics, but completely different when you reach the, the collegiate level. And I, I will say, you know, I, I do joke about not having taught a math class yet, but it was actually my education degree that got my foot in the door at, at Pitt. Um, my first role here, um, I had applied for a couple different positions kind of within the, the Pittsburgh area, knowing that I wanted to, to continue to pursue a, a, a career in, in athletics. Um and, and didn't have much luck knowing that my experience as a high school AD, while it prepared me a little bit, wasn't fully fully what you see at the collegiate level. So my first position that, that I had at Pitt was act, 
actually an academic support for student athletes. And so that unit reported through the provost, but it was my education degree that actually gave me that opportunity uh, uh, for an interview uh, with, with that unit. And that role is effectively supporting student athletes with their educational uh, needs and, and support as they do through a variety of different um, or all the sports. So I'm sure that gave you a, a nice feel for many of the different different athletic areas of the university in kind of one go. Yeah, th- there's no question, Matt. I spent 10 years as an academic advisor uh, for our student athletes over the course of that time worked with probably 10 of our 19 different teams over the course of that 10 years as an academic advisor. Uh, but it did give me a good sense of, of uh, Division One college athletics. Um, I, I knew uh, two years into it, I knew I didn't want to be an academic advisor for the rest of my life. And so I, I at that point then started uh, trying to learn as much as I can about other units with, within within our athletics department. Uh, anytime we hosted uh, championships, I was always the first to volunteer, uh, served when we had the Division One Women's Basketball Championship on two different occasions, was the assistant tournament manager, so great experience uh, in, in that space. But um, yeah, that those ten years were were instrumental for me in one building relationships with people for, with people within the department, learning the department and how it operates at, at a Division One level, um, but then prepared me to to take that next step into to administration. What? Oh, go ahead, David. I'm oh, sorry. I just had I want to just do a follow up Myersdale question. Then I had another question. So Myersdale question. You also at uh, one point coached uh, junior high, right? Um, <laughs> More enjoyable as a coach or a player? Or... Player. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime you can play, uh, you, you want to be able to play. Uh, but definitely a, a learning experience for me, uh, coaching junior high uh, girls basketball at Myersdale. And I guess my, cause you did go back and get your master's at IUP in uh, sports science. And I think it's interesting we're kind of, I guess – there's always that question, even, you know, from the high school level all the way up to the division one level, you know, what is it that an, an athletic director does? Like, it's always that, uh, that contentious position at school board meetings, like, what do we need an athletic director for? You know, what, what, what do they do? But you talked a lot about what they do. Um, and I guess maybe an obvious question, you know, what does that mean? Um, I know in the past you've been, uh, recognized by what sports Pittsburgh as partner of the year. Um, obvious question, you know, what does that mean, even here on our campus, to bring people in? Uh, it's become sports has gone from a pastime to an industry. And I'm sure you've seen that change in the many years you've been there. Any comments on, you know, what that means? Yeah, I, I think for me, as I can look back on it, it in my career, you know, first and foremost, it's our, our ability as, in the positions that we're in to impact our student athletes and their experience and that their experience as a whole. Um, as a student, as an athlete on your campus, um, and then their personal personal growth, knowing what are we doing to prepare them for life after their sport, uh, whenever that might be, whether it's a, a, a professional career in, in their sport or moving into the, the professional workspace. Um, so I think that's probably the, the most important thing is I look at how we're impacting our student athletes. And then just generally, the relationships that you can build uh, in, in this sport is, is tremendous. And I think I'm in the position that I'm in today because of the relationships and, and people that that have have mentored me along the way. Um, but it's all about, for me, working in college athletics is, is building relationships and, and providing great experiences for our student athletes. What what was the transition the, 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 when you finally made that into the, the admin side? You, you 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 had done the, the advising and you were working with the students and then what was that opportunity that eventually propelled you into this admin side? Yeah, we had uh, actually uh, just transitioned athletic directors at the time, uh, and Scott Barnes was was our AD. He had been at Pitt for about three months, and so my connection with him was very minimal. Um, the sport administrator position uh, was open for women's basketball. 
uh, and it was actually the relationships that I had built with everybody else that was on his senior uh, leadership, senior staff team, that actually uh, afforded me an opportunity to for him to connect with me about the opening um, and literally then make a move right across the hall. But it was really the, the relationships that I had made with the people in the department leading up to that that position being open that that allowed Scott to have the trust that he did in in those people, but also the trust in me to, to make that transition from athletics or uh, from academics into the athletic administration space. And and what does that portfolio look like for you? you yeah, know, what... so so I have served for the last ten years as um, a sport administrator, um, which is truly an extension of, of our director of athletics. You know, Alan Green announced last week as our new director of athletics. Uh, has oversight over the entire department, but he'll have a team of, and we've had a team of sport administrators that oversee particular sports who become just really extensions of, of, of Alan. He can't certainly be in 19 places at, at, at the same time. And so that's the role that, that a sport administrator will play is really an extension of the director of athletics and work closely with the coaching staff and student athletes um, throughout the year to make sure that that they're in positions to be successful. But I, you know, again, I would say now having served in the interim director of athletics role, I can say uh, effectively that I've now worked with all 19 of our, our teams <laughs> in one form or fashion over my last kind of 10 years working in athletic administration. What's, what's that like? Because I want to talk about the interim thing for a little bit you're kind of cruising through the, is it one of those things where you're cruising through your day and you get a phone call and next thing you know, you're like, Oh man, this, I did not anticipate this is what the way my day was going. And then what's the, what's the emotion, the over the, the feelings for all that, even in the sense of it being interim, it's still you. It is. Um, it, and it, it was an emotional day for sure. Right. Um, and in that, Heather had provided me great opportunities uh, as a director of athletics, as a female uh, in, in a sport that, you know, has historically been, been dominated by, by men. But so it was emotional, right? You know, I first have to manage the transition in, in, in our leadership um, and, and the opportunities and the impact that Heather had in her seven years, not only on the department, but what she had on me personally. And so I had to manage those those emotions, but I had to manage those uh, very quickly and, and compartmentalize them to some degree um, because I knew that the entire staff was looking at me uh, to continue to keep us moving forward in the interim process. Um, but I said it, and I said it to our staff that day, uh, while no one really wanted it, myself included under these circumstances, Heather had had prepared us to lead just in how she, her leadership style was, uh, giving us the ability to be very, uh, be able to manage our units and, and manage those areas that report to us. So so I felt prepared for it based on kind of the, the lead up it, it, to my career, um, but I didn't change who I was. And, and I think um, the last six weeks have, have just been for me focused on continuing to move Pitt athletics forward. We have great coaches and we have great student athletes that um, while some of that success uh, people will, will talk to me about, it, it wasn't anything that I did differently before the, when I was the executive associate uh, and then had moved into the interim role for six weeks and, and I'll move back to that executive role. I, I didn't change who I was or, or how I did things um, I, I just focused um, on continuing to move move our, our program and the department forward. Again, I, I'll go back to you know my time at UPJ, and I talked about my teammates. I'll say the same thing over the course of the last six weeks. I have really great staff members um, that that we've worked really well together for a long time, and so it was really us coming together as a unit um, for for these last six weeks until we we've hired Alan. Uh, to, to keep moving forward. There's no way that um, it wouldn't have been a, a successful six weeks if, if I didn't, if we didn't have the staff 
uh, in place to be able to, to do that. That makes sense. I like to I like to think, and, and it's true. There's the we've suffered it or not. We've not, I've <laughs> suffered through projects where things don't have or you don't have people around you to help you, and that doesn't work out well. I like to think that when in trouble, you call somebody from UPJ. <laughs> and we fix it. Um, but you're you're also talking about a period of time too that isn't necessarily quiet. You have basketball kind of right around the corner starting. You have all these other sports. And oh, by the way, the football team is n- getting national attention. And then you get kind of thrown in and say, "Keep it going. Good luck <laughs> through that process." So having that team has to be very very important. But I think that does go back again to the sports analogy. Um, You know, excuse me, whether you're on the bench and someone goes down and, you know, Toscano gets the tap or, you know, and and again, I think it's interesting because even when you watch professional sports and you see a, a, not that this is, you know, the analogy of a second stringer, but a second string that goes in, carries a team, and then guess what? Um, First stringer's back. You're back to playing your role, um, and he always Tom often, Brady was a backup quarterback when he started. But you I always often, remember. But you often think there's that maturity of that's the way life is. Sometime where, as likewise, I don't know if that you know. Again, I would hope that time as a sport also helped to prepare that. You, there, there's no question, um, for sure, that <laughs> again being prepared uh, to step into that role, but you know. You talked about it, the success of our teams when in that span, football doing really, really well. You've got two sellouts, uh, in particular, the sellout for volleyball against Penn State. Mm-hmm. Uh, volleyball in our men's soccer program, uh, having been ranked number one at a period of time, both number one at that time. But again, it, it really comes back to our, our coaches and our student athletes that we have. All I really needed to do was make sure that the team kept moving forward uh, and continued to make sure they had the resources that they needed to to at least be in a position to be successful. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm I'm ready to to go back. Uh, I'm ready for for Alan to to get started. You know, certainly my passion is working with our student athletes and our coaches. The college landscape is changing. Uh, at, at our level with NIL and with the, the house settlement and potential revenue share with our student athletes. And, and so that looks differently uh, than it did three years ago, let alone, you know, 10 years ago. Mm-hmm. Did you ever think that that's where college athletics would be at some point? I mean, I can remember the days when no one thought that Olympic sports would be a mix between, although other countries that were accused of doing it, that there would be a mix between professional and what was truly amateur sports. Did you ever think that we would get a point that it would be also represented in college athletics? Yeah, unfortunately I did. Um, I just didn't know that it, it would it would look like this and would, would happen so quickly uh, per se from, you know, two years, three years were, were removed from really full-blown NIL opportunities for them to, to quickly uh, transitioning into to revenue share uh, with them and still with with so many unknowns and in, in what that's going to look like in in the coming year. Um, but I did, you know, it, it athletics evolving and, and certainly we have to evolve with it to be successful. I don't want to put you on the spot, but better or for worse? Uh, too too soon to tell, right? Yeah. Um, what is, is the model sustainable? Um, you know, for me, I will always advocate for the, the, the amateurism and, and that what that looks like and, and what truly um, the impact that the college sports can have on, on, on students, you know, let alone our, our student athletes. Um, you you want to try to stay as close and true to that as you can, because the, the college uh, athletics landscape is different than the professional um, and so as much as we can maintain that, um, that's my hope, but too soon to tell, I would say. I think there's got to be a sense of, um, how to put it, that there's the competitiveness of, you know, again, you know, the Olympics, I grew up at a time where it was, it was amateur and there was always, you know, those, you know, with air quotes, accusations of, sure, we can't beat the Russians at hockey <laughs> because these guys are professionals. And it was only a matter of time, you know, to say, look, um, what do we do? And then again, you know, to get into the hockey scenario, but then NHL exploded with European players and it just became, 
you know, it's interesting when you watch Olympic hockey and you're mm-hmm. reminded that, okay, that, that individual is representing a country in which his origin was from, although oh, we yeah. see him as a capital or a penguin or a Canuck or, or, or whatever. Um, so I think there might be some of that, that not following that trend, you know, is that a, a better or for worse question? And not that I'm asking that question, but I think maybe that might be part of it. Not sure. Yeah, there, there's no question. It, the next uh, 12 to 18 months will, will be interesting to see how everything unfolds with, with the settlement of that the house case and, mm-hmm. and what that looks like. Thinking back, before we dive into some of the, the current basketball predictions that we're going to make everyone take, take because it's apparently the game of the theme of the show now. Okay. Um, we've got about five weeks left in this fr- uh, first, uh, the fall term here. Think back to your fall term, your freshman fall term. If you could go back and tell yourself where you are today, what is the reaction you think you have? If you, if you have the opportunity to talk to yourself, freshman term, fall term, and you say, this is what your career is going to be, do you believe it? Not at all. <laughs> no. Nope. Um, if I go back freshman fall term, I think we're trying to – uh, survived the cross country course uh, in preseason conditioning uh, w- with Jody and Deb uh, before the season starts. And so we, uh, teammates and I still joke about it with, with Jody and Deb about the cross country course or running Eisenhower uh, with our bowling pins. Um, but yeah, there, there's no question that I, the experiences and the, the opportunities that I've been afforded to, to, um, to experience um, as part of the Pitt Athletics umbrella in the University of Pittsburgh. You know, I've been on uh, three different foreign tours with our women's basketball program, having uh, traveled to Italy twice, Greece. Um, you know, and then not to mention when you talk about uh, the success of our programs and, and the, those opportunities with uh, having been part of men's soccer's back to back College Cup uh, runs. Uh, women's basketball success over a decade ago with, with their sweet six, 16 success. You know, there, there's no question that I, I was, I thought I was going to teach middle school math and I was going to coach girls, girls high school basketball. Um, so yeah, but I, I never thought I'd be in the, in this space. That's a question I wished I would ask. So kudos to Matt. So I'm not going to let you get away with this because, because <laughs> if you care to elaborate running Eisenhower with bowling pins, <laughs> exactly uh exactly what it was we started at the sports center so it wasn't like we started at the bottom of eisenhower um but part of our preseason in conditioning and i i joked about it when i gave my hall of fame speech um a few years ago that we always knew we were in trouble when we saw uh jody and, and pat working out together because a lot of times whatever the wrestlers did for conditioning, we did some variation of that. <laughs> um, and so we, you know, the, the Eisenhower and bowling pins started, we started at the, the, the sports center and carried essentially weights in our hand, but we went down theater drive uh, across scalp and then up Eisenhower um, and back to campus as, as part of preseason uh, conditioning. They never made, she never made you wrestle. We did not, but but we were certainly uh, conditioned very well. But and and we joke about it, but but it, in all seriousness, certainly prepared us for the style of play that we did, uh, sure. pressing and running, and and, and really uh, outworking our competition. So we can joke about it, but but in the end, it was it was only to prepare us for for how we played. That is that is interesting because on one plug, um, grew up a cross country track uh, athlete competed here, competed at another school, another state. But I can remember um, <clears throat> coaches from other disciplines saying if you could, if your conditioning was the key, you know, it was the old, and I can remember plenty wrestlers, football players, basketball players that, you know, um, championships are won in the off season. And there's so much to be said for that cross conditioning. Um, if you can outlast, you may not be able to outplay your opponent, but if you can outlast your opponent, um, there's something to be said for that. So, uh, obviously some genius coaching. Uh, <laughs> there's there's no question. Yeah. 
I've walked up Eisenhower <laughs> one time helping out with a political <laughs> campaign I was involved in. That was enough. <laughs> <laughs> so credit to everyone who survived that because I've done it once and I never will do it again. Well, and, and at that point you were less concerned about the incline and more concerned that you didn't drop your bowling pin. So <laughs> there was like dual focus there that you certainly didn't want to have to chase it uh, down Eisenhower. <laughs> that is interesting. I've always said not to go off on a tangent, but boy, that like in a car when you would even like when you went to school or when you get to the top of Eisenhower, and you just hit that, like... That crest? That crest, and you're like, oh my goodness, the world's below me. Yeah. And you're just like, wow. Try coming up Eisenhower with a stick shift, and no one realizes you're driving a <laughs> stick. <laughs> it's like, come on, we got to keep momentum going. So, Wednesday night, or tonight, as, as tonight, this podcast is yeah, released, yeah, um, we have our this basketball game. What are we thinking? How are we feeling? I'm going to leave it up to the pro. Yeah, I don't know. You're a ge- uh, I'm I'll a geographer. You're a journalist. Uh, it's so actually I'm somebody good. who has, actually has good, athletic ability. I'm Please. good with color. I'm going to say it's going to be blue and gold. It'll be my color commentary. I'll leave it up to... We made it a year before I got tired of you. Miss Toscano to uh, to give a prediction of sorts. Uh, I'm with you. Uh, the, the, <laughs> there, there's one pit team. Uh, we know for sure a pit team is going to win. Um, certainly excited about uh, Dewan, uh, yep. you know, and, and her first year uh, as head coach at, at Pitt Johnstown, excited to, to see what she can do with that program. Um, but also knowing that, you know, for us, we're, we're under second year head coach Tori Verdi, um, who has a significant rebuild ahead of him. And again, a time of NIL <laughs> space, mm-hmm. uh, but but a rebuild there nonetheless. And so, you know, I, I, I hope for, for a competitive game and an exciting game, but uh, haven't been able to with, with everything that has happened in the last six months, have not uh, been able to watch too much uh, of our women's basketball practices a- as I would have liked uh, leading into tonight's uh, game, but excited uh, more than anything, one, for, for my alma mater to be here and, and for, for my my teammates to be able to, to come uh, see a game, uh, knowing uh, that, that that should be uh, as much uh, of the experience for me as, as the game will be too. And I think that's, you know, not lost on that at all. That, you know, the exciting part is, and we did it with the men's last year when I was here, um, is seeing all those alum get together. And, I mean, we've got them coming from as far back as 78 and as recent as last year. And to see, you know, somebody who talks about playing in 78, um, this particular individual I was talking to on the phone, and she had reminded me how they would drive themselves to St. Francis because of Title IX. Um, Man, what a way it has come. Um, so that they could, you know, um, so they can compete. But you're right. I think it's the big thing, you know, win or lose on the court. Uh, you know, you get 30 or 40 alum together. And, man, it, it, there's a sense, you know, both the three of us all being alum from this university. Um, it's kind of cool just to sit and listen. Yeah, um, yeah there, there's no there's no question. Yeah. Um, how much, how quickly your time goes, yep. uh, you know, those four years while you're in it. Uh, and at times they s- may seem very long, but how <laughs> quickly that, that four years goes. But the relationships that, that you build during that time that continue to carry with you um, are, are, are so very important. And again, to me, I think a lot of my success, I, I a tribute to to my teammates at, at Pitt Johnstown, to my coaches there, my high school coaches, but also the relationships that were built that that are still sustainable for me, and the impact that that those people still have on my life and and, and what I do day to day. I think that's a great point to leave it on. I would agree, Jen. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day and and sitting with us and and coming on the podcast. Thanks for having me. The Tuck Shop podcast is recorded live on the University of Pittsburgh at Johnstown campus. Update your contact information with us by visiting johnstown.pitt.edu slash alumni. Connect with us online via Facebook and LinkedIn. Or consider donating to the university at give to, that's G-I-V-E-T-O dot pit dot edu slash give U-P-J.
This has been a production of Quantum Wave Media. Views expressed do not necessarily reflect the opinion of the University of Pittsburgh at Johnstown.